Well, just like preliminary research, like the initial steps before developing like the research project. Like it would be the, the theories, elaborating on theories behind, I have no idea, fundamental research. I guess, I guess kind of like the basic sciences research. Uh, not something that's directly applied to people's lives, but just sort of, I guess, basic science, yeah. That's the best way to put it. My name is Martha Crago, and I'm the Vice Principal of Research and Innovation at McGill University. I was also a member of a panel that put out a report on the funding of fundamental research. It seems like everywhere I turn, people are asking me, what is fundamental research? So I want to tell you a little bit about fundamental research and how it's alike and different from other kinds of research. So fundamental research is something where the researcher has the idea. Nobody asked him to do that research. They got curious about something and they sort of followed their own nose into discovery. And so we often call it discovery research as well. And it hasn't been a strategic priority of any government or any company. It's simply something that the researcher is looking into. So probably people have heard about Einstein. So Einstein thought of theories, like a theory of relativity. And that was very fundamental mathematical research that he was doing. So how is it different than applied research? Well, sometimes applied research is when a particular company or there's a particular illness that we're trying to cure, uh, or there's a particular situation we need to look into. Uh, could be of global consequence, could be immediate local consequence. It could be the government has decided on certain priorities that they want research to be done in. Uh, in Canada, at one point, it was a priority for the government that we do research around the tar sands. Uh, sometimes they have a priority on aging. And so in those cases, researchers get involved in doing research on something that is specified or prioritized by someone. Uh, and it is often applied research that has a particular application that's supposed to result from it. So this makes fundamental research and applied research different, but actually they're very interconnected because oftentimes a fundamental finding, like say Einstein's theory of relativity, leads us into applications like GPS, like lasers. So these things then have a connection to each other. And something, sometimes something starts as an applied problem and people discover there's some avenue they would like to pursue that is more fundamental and directed by an interest that has been spurred uh, by the applied situation. And sometimes there's fundamental research and 20 years later, somebody finds an application for it. So sometimes we see Nobel laureates and one of them will be 80 years old and one will be 60 and one will be 40. They might come from different countries and they share a prize. And oftentimes the 80 year old did fundamental research that then led to a little bit more directed research by the person who's 20 years younger, 20 years later. And 20 years after that, somebody found a very direct application that might be something that leads to a product or a medicine that is then marketed and then used. So these things are connected to each other. So the other question people ask me is, well, wh why should I care? Why should I care about fundamental research? Well, if you don't have fundamental research, you don't have the understanding of the basic properties of science, social science, humanities that are the basis or the foundation on which you can build. So sometimes people call fundamental research foundational research or basic research because it's the foundation on which a lot of things get built. More practical applications get built on it. So we need to understand our physical world. We need to understand our social world and our cultural world in order 
to get to places where we can find things that will have more direct application and in order that we can understand the world we live in and all of its richness. So why should you care about fundamental research? Well, think about it. Do you like GPS? Then you would like the theory of relativity that Einstein invented. Do you like it that you never got polio? Then you would like it that somebody discovered the basic properties, the way things work, so they could create a vaccine that would keep you from getting polio. Do you like it that one of your relatives has been able to take a treatment for something like cancer? That's because somebody came to understand some of the properties of what cancer cells are made up of and therefore later people discovered how they could be treated. Do we like it that we have uh, wheat that can grow under the cold conditions of Canada? That's because somebody once upon a time looked at some of the genetic properties of wheat and discovered there were ways to breed wheat that could withstand the cold of Canada. So there are many, many, many applications. Um, we, we look at these, we figure out how children learn, and then we can make applications to curriculum for school that facilitate better learning in children. So we have a whole range of things that come from fundamental research. We may not have understood what were the basic findings, but we understand how they make our world better. And this is really important. It's important for me, but it's really important for you. And it's actually important for all Canadians, because this is what live, makes us live in a prosperous society, a society that is knowledgeable, that has knknowledgeable people in it, and uh, knowledgeable and knowledge that we can share, share with others in the world, share among ourselves. So it's important to you, it's important to your families, it's important to children, it's important to this country and its citizens. Without it, we, won't be, we would not have been nearly as well off as we are. And it is for all Canadians. It is there to help the vulnerable, it's there to help the middle class. It's not something that's just the reserve of people in universities. This is knowledge that radiates outwards and radiates into people's everyday lives.